Nate and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for sponsoring today's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Niagara is the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products, including toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara products were originally designed just for plumbing professionals, but they're now available for homeowners as well. So, if you're remodeling your home or constructing new, check out NiagaraCorp.com to get long-lasting water savings. Hello, everybody. This is Nate Newton and my boy Isaiah right now. He's busy uh, getting ready for the season. You know, he's cleaning up a few things. You know, he did all our preseason games and stuff on the great Isaiah stand back. I call him Zeus. I mean, boy, built like a rock. But uh, I'm here standing in today for Isaiah. Nate Newton trying to do what he do. I can't do it as great as he does it. But you know what? We own this thing called the Dub Network, baby. And we got a show called Let Me Tell You Something. And big Nate Newton is going to go so solo so y'all deal with me we may not go 30 minutes we may not go an hour but i'm gonna give you 15 minutes of all i got straight power baby it's straight from the heart and i'm gonna talk about today the three things i want to talk about is the roster of the dallas cowboys and who the final guys is because the cuts have been made and they've been at this for a week so the team is kind of solid and who they have and who they want especially for this game coming up to the Giants. And then the next thing, I want to talk about a little bit about the Giants, offensively and defensively. And then I want to talk about what do we need to do offensively and defensively and what are our options are for us, our offensive line and our wide receivers because that is what's going to make the difference in this game. Uh, so, but anyway, and then, hey, if I, we get time, uh, if we can, I'll talk a little bit about Deion Sanders and his great victory. Over that TCU team in Colorado Buffaloes, uh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you now, I talked to my boy. He's a little hyped. He's a little hyped, you know, after that great victory that they had. So if y'all see me going down, I'll be just marking things off and writing things as I go. Big new. Now, he ain't the smartest most guys, but you know what? He's going to give you what he got. He's going to give it from his heart. Let me write down here. Prime time last. Yes. Prime time. Yeah. I tell you like right here now. The Dallas Cowboys have their final roster set. Mike McCarthy and his coaches, Dan Quinn and his coaches, and I'm saying that they're not two different entities. They work on the same team, but Dan Quinn kind of runs the, the defense, and Coach McCarthy gives him all of the power over there because now Coach McCarthy is now calling the plays for the Dallas Cowboys. And let me tell you about that before we get into the roster. I've been one of those guys that's from the start needed for Coach McCarthy to call plays. Uh, I have nothing against Kellen Moore. I wish him the best uh, out there with the Chargers. I really do. Uh, there's no malice in my heart for this young guy. Uh, the only thing that I thought he was missing was he did not set up things. And what I meant about that is if you have a, pa a pass play, can you, get, can, a, can you put a run play in that same formation and use the same players to get that that run playoff, so the defense won't can't dictate to you dictate what can happen to you or what they're gonna do to you because they'll see that look and they'll be like, oh, they're going back into another pass set, and you have a run set off of it, a play action pass set off of it, and 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 now you have certain plays that you're trying to set up for later on in the game, giving them the same look but with a different play, and then that way teams cannot play you. We're a two tight end team. And Coach McCarthy is going to favor that, especially, you know, we'll get into this later on about the injuries of the offensive line. But our roster is set. Uh, we have two new young guys at the backup positions on the offensive line and um, Awesome Richards and then T.J. Bass. T.J. Bass is going to play both the guards. Awesome Richard is going to play both of the uh, tackles, the swing tackle, the swing guard. Uh, we're going to have to go out and probably get us a center. We're going to have to go out and get another guy. Uh, they got Chamur Adaga. And I'm probably not pronouncing his kid's name uh, totally right, but he's supposed to be that swing tackle. But I, have seen, I haven't seen much of him from during training camp. And I'm just basically naming new guys that, are, that have made the roster or that may be playing a different position. Uh, offensively, you know we have Brandon Cooks came in, had a hell of a camp. Uh, hats off to him. I didn't like the fact that uh, he took our defensive players up in a plane 
during a preseason game. I didn't think that was too smart, but they got down safely. And I know the coach and the ownership of that team has talked to these guys uh, about that uh, that mishap. It wasn't nothing exciting for me. That was that 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 was a bad thing. You don't do that, especially in a little crop duster plane or uh, a little jet or whatever he was up there in. I'm just glad they got up and got back down on the ground safely. Brandon, don't come up in here with that stuff, man. But hey, he had a hell of a camp. He's a super guy. And he's a great person. That wasn't just a smart move, I don't think. But anyway, that's just Nate's opinion. I tell you what, uh, defensively, we got we had uh, Gilmore, a crafty veteran, a playmaker, uh, had a nice camp, a veteran camp, uh, took care of himself. Uh, I saw him work with a lot of the young guys and, and, uh, and, and got their game picked up, have, you know, worked with Bland and guys such as that. Uh, you know, doing their thing. So it's, it's some young guys that, that did their job. Uh, I wish I could say that uh, Mozzie Smith had a great camp. I think he had a great camp practicing, but uh, he has a lot of growing to do. That's our first round pick. He has a lot, a lot of growing to do. Uh, he has to understand how the defense is being played and the tempo of how the defense is being played. He's got to pick up his speed and he got to pick up his reaction time. I think that'll come over time. I think Mozzie got a lot of room to grow. And uh, with Dan Quinn and Coach Floyd and all of those guys, they'll be pushing him in the right direction. Our second round pick, a uh, schoolmaker, uh, started out with an injury, but this kid uh, picked it up. His training camp went on. He's a big man, 6'5", man, almost like almost 300 pounds. Uh, Big old scrappy dude, uh, catch fairly well, block real good. So that'll be a, a asset to the Ferguson, who's our other uh, starting tight end. That'll be an asset when we go two tight ends, that 12 personnel. That, that'll be a great thing. So as uh, time go on, we should see more and more Schoonmaker. Our third-round pick got hurt. Overshawn was stealing the show. Uh, I didn't watch this kid much at the beginning of training camp. But after the first preseason game, I knew right then that this kid was a starter. And what I mean by starter, he was going to be our nickel and dime Mike Backer. Uh, he was going not. He was never coming off the field. He was a special teams guru. Coaches loved him. Uh, a lot of people like, well, were you giving him a starting job? The impact that I thought this kid had as a linebacker, listen to me, as a linebacker was tremendous. Uh, I, I, you know, I felt that he had where we felt about Parsons as a linebacker, as a rookie. That's how I felt about this guy. And believe it or not, when he got injured, that automatically forced Marquise Bell because he has that same kind of mentality as this kid, and they moved him from safety to that nickel backer, that nickel linebacker, diamond, diamond, nickel. You know, I think diamonds when you have seven DBs in the in a in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a linebacker, and the other one is uh six DBs and two linebackers. And I, and I may got that wrong, but y'all y'all can check in there and make sure I got it right. But that diamond nickel packages that was Overshawn was going to take that over. And why I say why I say starter is because this kid would not come off the field in the NFL is, depending on the team you're playing, is almost 60% in nickel situations, a nickel looks with four receivers, empty backfields. Uh, so you uh, you have to have a guy that's a hybrid that can play uh, that, that Mike Backer that if you run, he still has the ability to get up and stop that run for a loss or no gain to get you off the field. Uh, he's dealing with a tight end or a wide receiver, a tight end or a running back, or uh, maybe even a slot receiver in a, on special on a certain situation that this guy can be athletic enough to compete and to make that quarterback uh, uh, look somewhere else because they see that guy is a hybrid guy that can not only hit, but he can cover. So when he when a back come out of the backfield or a tight end go across the, the middle of the shadow cross, this guy can cover them with the greatest V's. And this is what Overshone was showing before he had his uh, injury. So that that was a great get. Uh, 
just I think guys that just impacted that uh, that are new on the team uh, uh just on, and made our roster that that was a great thing uh uh I, I love it uh I think the uh, the coaches had a and the uh, uh Will McClay pro personnel they had a great uh off season of pulling guys in drafting the right guys uh it may not look like it with our first two picks, but let's give them six to seven, maybe eight games before we start making judgments on these guys. And I want to say one more, Jake, Jake Ferguson, guy from Wisconsin, I think a fourth round pick last year, came in and uh, has solidified that uh, starting tight end job. Like just, just a great job. TJ Bass out of Oregon. Uh, offensive line, a great job. Austin Riches, great job because they took veteran guys places uh and and now uh with tyron with tyler smith being hurt boom we may have to insert one of these guys or give them some uh some greater playing time but that's basically the roster guys that i want to talk about that made the roster that's making the impact marquise bell in his second year he's making the impact i think he's gonna be a nickel and dime uh linebacker so uh these guys are making uh uh um uh, impact. Let me see some. Let me see Chauncey Goldston, third year guy. He's making an impact. Uh, we traded Kelvin Joseph for a uh, a cornerback. Uh, Noah out of Miami. I can't pronounce that last name. Is I G B I N O G H E N. You can you you can pronounce it. I can. I don't want to mess up the kid's name. I will learn it by the first game. By the time we play these Giants this weekend, but uh, they traded Joseph our second round pick two years ago, three years ago to for this first round pick Noah uh, uh, this year here. And let me make sure I got the right cornerback. Let me make sure I have the right cornerback. Let me look through here. Yes, sir. I think I have the right cornerback. He's from Miami. And uh, so we we switched corners. And I think it was a great move for this kid, Joseph. Now, Miami is a little bit more live than what uh, Dallas is. So, Joseph, got, be careful, son. The nightlife out there in Miami, boy, Ooh, it's something different down there, my friend. Be careful how you handle yourself and always be aware. Keep your head on the swivel. Uh, hope, hope you're the best, man. Really do. But uh moving on, that from the rosters. I want to go now into the uh into the game uh versus the uh the New York Giants. I don't have a lot to say because both teams have not played their veteran guys during the preseason. Mike uh MacArthur was adamant about that. Coach Dayball was uh was adamant about that, uh about not playing their guys and uh so you don't know what to expect. I mean, you know who uh, Daniel Jones, uh, Barkley, Sikhan Barkley, you know these guys. They're, they're great guys uh, defensively. You know, you have uh, – let me look at this guy. You got Leonard Williams, uh, Lawrence Dexter, who just signed a new contract. You got guys that can ball defensively, and that's my big – that is always my big worry is when I watch teams – whether it's uh, college, whether it's high school, I always, I always look at the defensive line. And then I look at the offensive line. Can you block their defensive line? Because the most important person in the house is the quarterback. And the person that the quarterback fears the most is not that corner standing out there, but that defensive end that's standing out there. And even more importantly, that nose tackle that's over your center that's got to snap that ball and make sure it gets back there safely. So I look at that defensive line of New York, and like I said, they, they have some horses. They have uh, a Z, uh, 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 Lari. Uh He's nice, outside linebacker, second-year second, uh, second year guy. So they, and, and they just have some horses back there, man. And and. It's not so much that I'm worried about their defense uh, individually. It's what Don Martindale, a uh, guy that came from the Ravens, he's a mastermind. Uh, I think they run like a 3-4 base defense, but they have a reduced look, so it looks like a four-down line. And he has – he's notorious for blitzing. Uh, for giving you a quarterback, uh, he'll go back and look at their last four or five games of 
of, of last year. He'll look at the preseason and see how we've done things. And he'll try to come up with that, this perfect blitz or this perfect game or this perfect uh, look uh, to kind of throw you off and try to play mind games with you. So, but what the advantage we have, I think it's a disadvantage when you don't be able to watch the other team, but it's also a disadvantage for them because what we have offensively now is we run a different offense. We don't run that old uh, offense where uh, it was the individual beating a, a certain man. We run an offense now where it's truly the open guy. You know, it's truly getting the ball out of your hands. It's now, you know, you don't have to wait on this or wait, look around a lot or wait. It's a timing offense. It's a West Coast offense. They want to call it the Texas offense. Whatever they want to call it, it's fine. But now we got guys that understand where they're supposed to be, why they're supposed to be there, who they're clearing out for. So you can't take routes off. You can't jog off the ball because your quarterback – uh, it's a lot of three step, five steps, it, and now when the quarterback reads, when he looks out and reads, he's got to get rid of the ball. So the receiver has to be where he's supposed to be. He cannot mess around, play games because uh, you have to be where the ball. Is. So we're trying to cut down on the interceptions for Dak. We we're relying on the receivers to know where they're supposed to be, and that'll help our offensive line. But now the theory is when you run a West Coast offense, you got to have a coach or a play caller that's getting a, get, getting you in and out of the huddle by 18. When that thing hit 18, you want to be breaking that huddle. You want to get up to by 15 so the quarterback can look around. And if he need to change the play, he has time to change the play without panicking. And what I mean by that is because if he's changing the play, a lot of times the protection, whether it's from a run to a pass or vice versa, uh, pass to another pass, the protection may change. So now with 12 seconds left, me as a center, I can look around, and if I have to go from the middle linebacker to the outside linebacker, I can say, hey, 55 to 7 to, to 35. Or I can say, no, 35 to 25, depending on what the protection is. So they're going to try to pick up the pace. They're going to ask everybody to be responsible and know where to be so this West Coast offense can – can do what it needs to do. I'm going to jump over the defense right quick. i like give you a little something over there. This defense is in its third year with Dan Quinn. It knows what to do. It knows what to do. Now, Michael Parsons has declared, I don't know what the coach is at, that he's a defensive end. And that's where he's going to rush from. He's picked up a little bit of weight. He's worked with offensive linemen during the offseason, work, working on his on his skills as a pass rusher. Uh, I think that if he becomes a better run stopper, so when they run at him, uh, now you can't stop him. If he becomes that run stopper that we know he can be, it ain't a, with him. It ain't whether uh, he can do it. Or we know he can do it. It's just who he want to do it on a consistent basis. So when they try to run at him to slow him down from pass rushing. Uh, he can he can handle that tackle or he can handle the double team with the tackle and the tight end. I, I, I know he can handle the tight end, so I'm not even worried about that. But Quinn is going to place everybody where they need to be. Curse going to play a little bit of nickel. Uh, he's going to come up in the box. Uh, he's going to be where he need to be. Uh, we don't know where uh, Wilson going to be at the other safety. We don't know if he'll uh, be playing this game, but uh, I hope he is. Uh, so these guys are ready, though. We got Gilmore and Diggs at the at the at the at the uh, at the corner spots. We got Bland, uh, Deron Bland at the at that slot. Uh, Lewis is coming back. Uh, you know, so uh, we we're set. We're set defensively. The question is, can Hankins and Chauncey Goldston? And uh, Gilmore stay healthy. If these guys can stay healthy until the young fella uh, gets his mind right, Maz get his mind right, and insert him into the game plan. So now we, we – because if a team can't run, the goal of every defensive coordinator is for a team to not to be able to run. If you just want to pass, I, I can get you. 
But if you have the option to do both run and pass, then you I can't set my defense. I can't dictate what's going to happen. But if I have a chance to take away your run, I better say if I can take away your pass and make you one dimensional, then I can set my defense and I can start dictating what can happen. Well, we know what the Cowboys want to do. If they can stop the run, which that's been a problem the last two years. Uh, we did well in the playoffs, even against the 49ers, but we need to be better. We need to have offensive coordinators thinking we can't move, they can't move the ball, whether it's passing or whether it's running, and make them go one dimensional. Now, that's when the mad scientist. Dan Quinn going to go off, especially when he can move Michael around to different positions. A lot of people keep saying, Michael's a linebacker. Michael's a linebacker. Michael is a football player. Believe me, he's a football player. So they talking MVP this year. I'm the type of guy that's wait and see, you know, because there's always a nagging injury or something may happen. Uh, he may explode all over the world, which we all hoping that happens. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to just give you glimpses of uh, what I think about the offense and the defense, uh, what I think about New York and, and uh, what I, you know, I, I have the utmost respect for New York. I know that a lot of people is looking at Daniel Jones and saying, hey, he only threw 17 uh, touchdowns last year uh, and he ran in for a few touchdowns, uh, you know, uh, but this kid, has to have something in him because Coach Brian Dable, Dable saw something in him, and they resigned him. And I understand that you know it maybe it was a little bit too much money or whatever. That's not my issue. My issue is can they contain this kid? Because if you take away, like we talked about earlier, the run game, and we take away Barkley, and we take away that run game, now that leaves Daniel Jones out to throw the ball. Last year we kept him up under sixty two percent. He lost five. He lost six games when under sixty two percent. He lost both games to us. One game he was fifty four percent. The other game he was sixty percent. What that tells you is that this kid hasn't yet learned how to beat you when he's not accurate or when this when well, when everything is on his shoulders. So if we can get Saquon Barkley out of the game. Not by injury, just stop him. You know, I don't want nobody injured or hurt. But if he get hurt and just get knocked out, that's one thing. Get a little bruise, he get knocked out. Now that puts it all on Daniel Jones. Now he has a few weapons, and and you know he has uh, Isaiah Hoggins, he has uh, Darius Slayton, uh, he has uh, Sterling Shepard. Uh, yeah, so they they got some better. They got Waller, Darren Waller. Uh, if he stays healthy and Shepard stays healthy, those are the X factors. Those are the guys that our our safeties and linebackers may have to be looking at. And uh, Waller is a baller from uh, Vegas, but he's been hurt the last few years. The same with Shepard. He's coming off of uh, a bad injury. So, But if we can take Barkley out of the game and rely on Daniel Jones to win this, we got a chance, fellas. We got we got a super chance. Now, I've talked about that. This is the key to the whole game. And we got to go to the offensive side to get that. We have to stay healthy on the offensive line. We have to have all our guys intact. Tyron Smith, Tyler Smith, Biotish. We have to have Martin. We have to have Steele. Still just signed a new big contract. He's healthy, but he's coming off of an injury from last year. I think a knee. That we have to be patient. This is where Coach McCarthy will have to have his what I call hard hat on. He's gonna have to remember that uh we're gonna have to hit our head against the wall running a couple of times. We may not get much, but we're gonna have to stick with the run because Steele started with him. That's where he gets his confidence from. He's your classic right tackle who's a run play action pass tackle. What I mean by that is if you run a lot, run a lot with him, or you run uh, enough with him, he builds confidence through his through his run game. And then as the as the pass game gathers, as the game goes on, he gets that alternate confidence that he can beat you. He's not a guy that I want to have out there if it's 68 plays. I don't need for you to open the game up, uh, passing, 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 passing. 
you know, some games are going to be like that and you're going to have to do it, but I don't need that. Because if the guy gets something early on him, we don't have the same uh, steal, you know, uh, as, as as if we start out trying to run or implement a little bit of run. So he's your classic play action pass, right tackle. I, I like that they paid him. Uh, big fella, bend your knees, bend your hips, baby, and let's lock out and play. Uh, uh, the, the next guy, Zach Martin, say no more. Got a new contract, 36 mil guaranteed the next two years, healthy. Ready to go, rock and roll, uh, all world, top t- uh, top five uh, offensive lineman in the league. Do your thing, Zach. Hope you stay healthy. Uh, Tyler Biotish, we need you, baby. We need you. You've gotten better every year. Continue to grow. Continue to be who you need to be. Our right guard, we don't know. Not right now. Uh, Tyler Smith is getting uh, the getting MRI as we speak. Uh, has already gotten a, an MRI. So, uh, We'll we'll know more as the week go on. Uh, if he's not there, uh, we got uh, Idago may start there. Uh, awesome Richards may start there. Uh, T.J. Bass may start there. Uh, and then our right tackle is Tyron is uh, Tyron Smith. We need Tyron. We need you, Tyron. We need you, baby. Stay healthy. I lay hands on y'all. Do whatever it takes. Stay healthy, Tyron, because if he stays healthy, we have a chance uh, to beat these Giants. I mean, like uh, the Giants have, like I said, they got a nice team. They got Sean Robinson at the D tackle. They got um, uh, a Z, you know, at, uh, at, the ins- at the outside linebacker. They got uh, Michael McFadden. They got guys that can rush the passer, but more importantly, they have Don Martindale. They have a mad scientist, much like our mad scientist, that he will give you looks, he will play games, he will stunt, and he will play games with them tackles and defensive ends, and he will bring linebackers at, at, the, at the crazies of times, you know, and uh, we're going to have to put pressure on them. We got to put pressure on them because our offensive line, as of right now, today, is not whole. We don't know what Sunday night bring. Uh, if if, 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 if uh, Taylor Tyler Smith get back, oh, I'm feeling good. I'm I'm feeling super good. Uh, that's about it. I think our wide receivers intact. I think Tony Pollard, which you haven't said much about, is going to be intact. Uh, I'm not worried about the, who's the second back. I think Dottle can do it. I think along with uh, Deuce, they can do it. They can get those four or five carries. I'm looking at for the running backs combined to maybe have 32 touches, 33 touches, 22 of them coming by Tony Pollard. I need for Tony Pollard to have 22 touches totally, whether it's runs or passes, I don't care, but not more than 22 touches a game. Save him for the playoffs because I think we have a great chance of getting there. Uh, but I need for Dottle, Rico Dottle. I need for him to touch it five or six times. I need for uh, my man, uh, the little guy, uh, Deuce, to touch it four or five times. And at the end of the day, a combined 32, 32 touches, the other 40 or uh, uh, 50, uh, 40 or uh, 45 plays go to the um, – to everybody else. I mean, we got to feed C.D. Lamb. He's, he's up for a big contract, and he's grown every year. We got to feed Cook. He's special. Can run every route. Speech to burn it up. We got to feed Gallup. Gallup is coming back. He's healthier than he ever been. Yes, sir. And then we got to save a little bit for Ferguson. We got to get <laughs> Jake Ferguson a little bit. Then you got Hendershot. So we got we got to get the ball around. If we can average 78 plays a game, everybody will get touches. Uh, you don't want to be locked in on one guy in today's NFL. Like Coach uh, Quinn says, I want guys that can cover the whole 52 or 55 yards or however long 50 yards, and I need that whole 100 yards covered. You need long athletic guys on defense. You need long athletic guys or speedsters on uh, on offense. Uh, uh, Pittman, I'm excuse me. I'm going to go back to my old team, Kavika Pittman, not that. Kavante Turpin, sorry. He, we need for him to come up big, not only as a special teamer, but when they give him those special plays in the red zone or in the middle of the field, we need for you to catch the ball and work your magic. Don't fumble. Those are my keys to every game. Don't fumble. Cause fumbles. Don't fumble. 
know where you're supposed to be, line up and execute. If the Dallas Cowboys do that, they have a great chance of going far, far, far this year. And you need to win this New York game. You cannot lose New York and then come back and have the Jets the next week. Uh, that's another story. I'll talk about it at another time. Uh, the Cowboys should win this game handily. And you know, I mean handily is about seven points, you know, a little bit more, not, not less. It shouldn't be close, not three points close, I, I, you know, and I call that close. But anyway, the Cowboys should win. That's about as much as I'm going to talk about. Uh, these things, uh, the Cowboys, uh, the roster. Now I want to talk about my boy Deion Sanders. Deion, prime time. What's up, baby? Great victory this past week over TCU. They had you in some polls down by 21. They had you some by 30. Uh, you came in with great composure. Your son at the quarterback position, great composure. Honor the wide receiver slash DB, great composure. All the other guys, a little running back, great composure. I mean, because we know TCU has great fight. Uh, the coach over there, the head coach is a great man, great guy. Uh, it was just a, it was a great game, and somebody had to lose. I mean, a lot of people just was hoping that Dion would show up and uh, and not get embarrassed. He not only showed up, but he showed out. Uh, he he did his thing. I talked to him. Uh, I was not at that game. I was up in uh, Canton, Ohio. Uh, we had a black college uh, game uh, between uh, Virginia Union and I want to say Morehouse. I think Virginia Union just beat them down. And so when we had that, uh, that's where I was. But I congratulated him after the game because I was watching a little bit of it as they, you know, well, I congratulated him when they got back in town. And then I talked to him this a few days ago, you know, and I just told him, hey, man, I'm happy for you. One down. Congratulations. A lot more to go. And, uh, you know, we 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 talked. I ain't going to say something because he was a little agitated in the postgame show. But he told me it was a couple of reporters that had been getting after him for, uh, you know, a couple of months now, you know, trying to, you know, uh, say what is he, he's not going to have success in the way he's doing things. Uh, the thing that bothers me is, and when you try to criticize someone for doing and taking advantage of the system, the way everybody else has taken advantage of the system, why do, why do we single out certain people to criticize? So uh, like I tell people, I, I wasn't going to be too low if they didn't win the game because I knew they was going to represent themselves well. I'm not going to be too high because they won the game because Nebraska, and I like Nebraska coach. Uh, I think he didn't get a good start last week, but I think he'll be all right. Uh, so Nebraska got them a great coach. Uh, he used to coach at Baylor, and, and he was the coach at uh, the uh, – he's slipping my mind. He was the coach at the Panthers. I've always liked him. I think he's a good coach. I think it's going to be a nice game up in Boulder. I wish I could make it. I can't. It's a night game here in Dallas, and they play at 12, but, you know, I'm a driver, so I can't drive. But uh, prime time telling all y'all that love him, continue to love him, and God bless y'all and all y'all that's hating him. He'll pray for you. I'll pray for you too. Uh, it's been nice. Uh, Isaiah, I need you. Come on back, my brother. I need you, boy, because, hey, hey, I like to talk. Ooh. It's a long one here, man. I want to thank Niagara. You know, uh, they're great. Uh, they sell great toilets. Uh, me and Isaiah own them. I got to take mine back because I dropped mine and cracked. So I got to take mine back and do whatever it takes. But hey, we flushed another one. We pre we appreciate you, Niagara. We appreciate the the Dub Network. We have other shows out there. Go check them out. Uh, be involved. Uh, uh, I'm gonna be doing a lot kind of by myself. I'm going to be doing a lot with other people, but I'm always keep Isaiah with me. That's my man. That's my guy. He's the great, he's the greatest at getting in and out and making things happen. Niagara, thank you. Hey, we flushed another one. Bye-bye.